Peace. This is White Raptor News Ministries. All praise and glory to the Supreme Spirit of Truth, the Living One, Creator of the heaven and the earth, the universe. Okay? There's a lot of people out there that are teaching that there's multiple verse, multiple universes. They call it the multiverse. The multiverse is that, what you're looking at right here, this little uh, ever-ready bunny rabbit here with his oculus. Okay, that's that's the multiverse right there. So a multiverse could possibly exist that has been created from our ancients from a long, long, long time ago. But um, you got to realize that still the multiverse is still within one universe. No, that sounds weird, but it is what it is. The fellowship off your offering here at Leviticus chapter 3. Like I said, I don't know what happened. These I thought that I had uploaded all these chapters, but I'm finding while I'm creating this playlist that I've missed a few of these uh, chapters. Uh, Leviticus, particularly Leviticus 2 through 5, I've missed. So we're going to pick up these, these chapters here and then we'll continue on with um, the other chapters. The fellowship offering, if your offering is a fellowship offering, you are to offer an animal from the herd, whether male or female, you are to present before the Lord an animal without defect. You are to lay your hand on the head of your offering and slaughter it at the entrance to the tent of meetings. Then Aaron's son, the priest, shall splash blood against the sides of the altar. See, this all sounds to me like, uh, you know, I've already said to you, showed you guys many times that burnt offerings are are not necessary. Here in Isaiah, I am sick of your burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fattened cattle. I get no pleasure from the blood of bulls and lambs and goats. When you come to worship me, who asked you to parade through my courts with all your ceremony? Stop bringing me your meaningless gifts. The incense of your offerings disgust me. <laughs> well, folks, that's an opposite. And that's what this channel teaches. I teach contradictions in the Bible. Okay, I put them right in front of you. It's on you whether you want to find discernment or not. You're the one that has to remove the scales from your eyes. Nobody can save you. Salvation is in your own hands. It's not in this bullshit cross that they shove in your face over and over. Okay, the cross is the key to death in Hades. You wear that cross around your neck. You're going to be chained to this reality. Your immortality will be to be live, to live in a flesh suit and die. The spirit lives forever, folks. Okay, we are spiritual beings. We are energy forces and our energy only moves from one place to another. What's your, where are you going to wind up at? So the spirit is telling you that none of, none of this stuff matters to him. From the fellowship offerings, you are to bring a food offering to the Lord. The internal organs and all the fat that is connected to them, both kidneys with the fat on them near the loins, the on the long lobe of the liver, which will be removed with the kidneys. Then Aaron's sons are to burn it on the altar on the top of the burnt offerings that is lying on the burnt wood. It is a food offering, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. If you offer an animal from the flock as a fellowship offering to the Lord, you are to offer a male or female without defect. If you are offering, if you offer a lamb, you are to present it, present it before the Lord. Lay your hand on its head and slaughter it in front of the meetings. And why do you have the word laughter and the word slaughter? And any time you're slaughtering something, look, folks, I know that if you saw the abhorrent things that take place at a slaughter farm and the way that these men, mankind, beat these fucking animals over the tops of their heads with baseball bats, how they slaughter them, they put freaking clips on their fucking noses and then close up their mouths and belt them up where they can't fucking breathe and suffocate them to death, and they do just that. They slaughter them, okay? And I'm telling you, 
the in the creation story with Adam and Eve, it was never the spirit never told Adam and Eve, you may eat any an animal that you so truly free. Uh, he said that when he created all the plants with seeds in them, that those foods will be that that food from the fruits will be yours as meat. That's what was said. So there was a change in the Bible, Israel. There was a change in the Bible, Gentile. And you have to discern these changes that are taking place. I love meat. I still eat meat. But they pushed the, uh, a short in my thread the other day that showed this guy doing just what I told you. He he puts clips on. He They have the head of this bull inside of a, some kind of thing where the bull can't move or anything. And then they stick clips on the bull's freaking nose and, and belted up his mouth where he couldn't fucking breathe and suffocated the thing to death. Okay, why why do you think they do that? Or because they're too fucking cheap to put a bullet in the fucking head, and when you're killing hundreds of thousands of uh, slaughtering animals, that's a cost to put a bullet in in an animal's head. So they beat them over the head with baseball bats, and that's the meat that you're eating. Okay, it's all foul, it's all wrong, and I repent for it every day because I'm a meat eater. It's what I if, if I could have been brought up a vegan and never ate a piece of meat in my life and walked just eating vegetations, fruits, berries, nuts, all that, I would have been completely happy because I have eaten people's vegan food that is absolutely delicious. Truthfully, though, 15 minutes after you walk away from the table, your stomach's grumbling and it's grumbling for meat because we've been trained to eat meat all of our lives. From the fellowship offering, you are to bring in a food offering to the Lord. It's fat, the entire fat tail cut off close to the backbone, and the internal organs and all the fat that is connected to them, both the kidneys with the fat on them near the loins, and the long lobe of the liver, which you will as you, long lobe of the liver, which you will remove with the kidneys. The priest shall burn them on the altar as a food offering presented to the Lord. Okay, well, again, what Lord, folks? I am sick of your burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fattened cattle. That, again, contradictions. If your offering is a goat, you are to present it before the Lord. Lay your hand on its heads and slaughter it in front of the tent of meeting. Then Aaron's son shall splash its blood against the sides of the altar. See, just, I don't know, folks. I don't know about this splashing blood, blood sacrifice. None of this, none of this is right to me, man. Not, you see, I was taught by Brother Raptor News. But now that I'm reading the entire Bible, things just don't sound right in this thing to me, man. Right? You're slaughtering animals. You're spr splashing their blood over there for a Lord, which is definition for Lord is Yahweh, and Yahweh is a man. So this is a man because the, the, the smell is pleasant to a man. The, the supreme spirit of truth could, I'm pretty sure that he could care less about any of this as it says right here in your face. I am sick of your burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fattened cattle. Freaking, uh, I sit here and I tell Israel, because I've heard plenty of Israel, Israelites say that this Bible is a perfect script as well, man. And if an Israelite's telling you that this Bible is a perfect script and it hasn't been tampered with, then they're the devil themselves. They've, they've sold out. What have they sold out for? The power and the money. From what you offer, you are to present this off this food offering to the Lord. The internal organs and all the fat that is connected to them, both kidneys with the fat on them near the loins and the long lobe of the liver, which you will remove from the kidneys. The priest shall burn them on the altar as a food offering, pleasing a pleasing aroma. All the fat is the Lord's. Fat is disgusting. It's absolutely nasty. It smells good while it's on the fire. Huh, on fire. Hmm, fire, pleasing to the Lord. Food on fire, pleasing to the Lord. 
fire, flame broiled, barbecued, cooked, stir fried, deep fried, fucking oven baked, fried in the oven, all kinds of fucking things, folks. That's why that's why it's called Hell's Kitchen. Gordon Ramsay's Hell's Kitchen. It's right in front of your face. We're not to be eating meat. These animals weren't put on this plane of existence for for uh, for humans to destroy. They were put on this plane of existence for the Gentile nations to destroy. It was the Gentiles that were given dominion. Remember that? Here, let me show you, man. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, Bible Hub. So God created mankind in his own image, and in the image of God he created them, male and female he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, and every creature that crawls upon the earth. This is the ones that were created on the sixth day were given dominions, because these that are created on the sixth day of creation are the devils. This is... What the supreme spirit of truth, remember, God created good and evil. He, The supreme spirit of truth created good and evil. Good and evil is both underneath of the firmament, which is a vault. Anything that's in this flesh suit can't escape this plane of existence. So when they say this here, when they say here, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven, whether it was out of body or in it, I do not know, but God knows. <clears throat> well, I do know. I don't know who the hell's telling you anything. Everything that's underneath the firmament of God doesn't escape this plane of existence. There ain't anybody that's standing there watching a man float up in space, heading up out towards to the great sky above us, man. Okay, this is fantasy stuff, folks. You got to wake up from the fantasy. Also, I might as well tell you, man, to the third heaven. Third Ordinal from Trius, third, neutered, neutered, a third party, or a third time, thirdly. A third, huh? Okay. Strong's Concordance, number three. Remember, Satan has a heaven too, folks, and it's called Abaddon, the angel from the abyss, the third heaven. Abaddon, the angel from the abyss, the destroyer the destroying angel, or a place of destruction. So somebody saw a man go to the third heaven, huh? Three, anything that's tied in with the number three is a trinity. Trinity worship is going to leave you in the hellfire. It's just that simple. Okay, this is the lasting ordinance for the generations to come. Whenever you live, wherever you live, you may, you must not eat any fat or any blood. But the Lord, he loves the blood. He just told you up here he loves blood or he loves the fat. You know, give him the, the fat is the Lord. All the fat is the Lord's. You must not eat any fat or any blood. You must not eat any fat or any blood. Huh. John chapter 5 John chapter 656, Bible Hub. I really wish this parable said 666. Wouldn't that be beautiful? No parables in the Bible anywhere have 666, do they? I have, I've, no, there is, there is. But I would have really loved it if this one was 666, because it would have been right in your face. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood. Hold on. What did I just read here, man? You must not eat any fat or any blood. Any blood, any blood. You're not to eat any blood. Okay. Whoever eats my flesh eats my fat and drinks my blood. Whoever drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. This is Jesus, the bread of life. In case you didn't know, that's a vampire. Okay. I'm telling you, folks, you better wake up. And this goes for Israelites that are pushing uh, <clears throat> the black man, G uh, black man Yeshua or Yehoshua or however you pronounce it. 
uh, Yahweh Shai. You got all kinds of names for Jesus Christ on this plane of existence. Joseph, Josephet, Johannan. These are all names broken down through the ages, all for the single name of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the God of the dead. Okay, look, anybody that wants you to eat their flesh is a vampire, folks. Okay, folks, you, it's it's so basic and simple and right in front of your face, man, that a vampire here is a demon, it's a ghost, okay, a visitant, anything else. Strong mash, matches are extortioners, and who extorts more money than anybody on the face of the earth? The government, okay? See, the government calls people that don't work freeloaders, but it's the government that are freeloading off of you. You, they made you their slaves, so they're freeloaders off of the money, the, the taxes that you pay. They don't do a fucking thing, man. They're a bunch of fucking leeches and parasites. That's what the government is. They're the vampires. And Jesus is wanting you to eat his flesh and drink his blood in the vampires, the government, Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 Bible hub. For unto us a child is born. This is Yoheshua, Yeshua, Yahushai. Unto us a son is given. This is the star God, Jesus Christ crucified. Two different Jesus Christs right there in front of your face. And the governments will be upon his shoulders. Jesus, the son's shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Why not Yeshua's shoulders? Because Yeshua is the one that says, Fear the Lord your God and serve him only. That's what this one's saying. This one here saying, I'm the light, the truth, and the way. Nobody comes to the Father but through me. And the governments will rest upon the one that says, Nobody comes to the Father but through me upon his shoulders. And Jesus, the star God, he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is all bullshit. Remember, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Now judgment is upon the world. Now the prince of this world will be cast out. Well, who's the prince of this world? The prince of darkness is what you're told. Satan, Lucifer, the dragon, the beast, the, the devil, Jesus. Jesus is the prince of the world. I just proved it to you right there. Jesus is the prince of peace. I'm beginning to think that peace is a pretty nasty damn word because it's nothing that this plane of existence has ever seen. This plane of existence is eternal war. It's perpetual. It's a never-ending place of war. It's always been from the very beginning since Adam and Eve ate that fruit. They were cast out into a world of those that were created on the sixth day of creation. That God Elohim that created himself in an image of God on the sixth day of creation. You must not eat the fat or any blood. It's that simple. Keeping this one short as well. All praise and glory to the Supreme Spirit of Truth, the Living One, man. Blessings to all those that love the Supreme, the One, the Eternal, the Self-Existing. I don't know His name. If Israel is comfortable with calling God Yahweh, go ahead. If you're comfortable with calling God Yah or Yahweh or any of the names that Israel calls them, which is a problem for me as well, because the minute you start adding Yahweh, Yah, and Yahweh, that's three different names again, okay? If all the people of Israel are one nation, then they should all be calling God one name, not three different names, okay? Now, Yah could be short for both Yahweh or Yahweh, because you have Yah in all three of them, and the Bible does talk about these names, so all I can say is that the God of Israel is not the same God as those of the Gentile. This is why the God of Israel gave you a commandment saying, you shall place no other gods before me. Because clearly there are other gods that were created. Something supreme gave something that he created permission to create this place. As it says, I'm not lying, I'm not making this stuff up, folks. All you got to do is break out th this Bible here and start looking at it. This God here is Elohim, and it's a plural. Anything that's a plural can't be of the supreme. It can't be the supreme spirit. 
And this God here, since Elohim is plural, then that means many. And then you have the man, and then you have the word man in the word many. So man created man in his own image. A God, this God, Elohim, created man in his own image. In the NIV, this is the mankind in his own image. And in the image of God, he created him. One man created himself, properly self, an entity, a demonstrative sense of entity. This is an entity, male and female. He created him, male and female. He created him, a transvestite. He created him, a little fudge packer. He created him, a little faggot. That's what you got being created here. This is why when the LBGT Q&A are screaming in the streets and saying, why would God create me that? Because this God here is the seed of Satan exposed on the sixth day of creation. Who is it? Jesus. Jesus is the image. So God, Jesus created man in his own image. Okay. This is not the same God that created the second man, Adam. There's two Adams. This, this is the first man, Adam, created in an image. The first man, Adam, is darkness. God created evil first. He created evil first on the sixth day of creation. And then Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, Bible Hub. Thus the seven the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host in them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work. That's not the one. Sorry about that. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And breathed into the life, breathed the breath of life into his nostrils, and the man became a living being. The second man, this is the man and woman in the garden. The woman's not even created yet. It's the man that's being created. And then later in Genesis 2, 21, 22, is when God removes a rib. And that's that's a fishnet story too. God didn't remove a rib, folks. God extracted mar bone marrow. Bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh means bone marrow. Means that we're cloned. We're cl we ourselves have been cloned. It's it's possible that the supreme spirit's creation, the second man's creation, are clones. Hate to say it, but it's quite possible. But why do I? Why would I even say something like that? Well, here, let me show you. So the question to ask yourself when I show you this is, do you believe or could this be happening already? Because they're talking about children in these little pods that they've been able to create a an embryo inside of these little eggshells. Now, they're saying that they could have these factories and that they could produce... What these would be, would be beasts. You understand, There's there'd be no breath of God on these machine-created orbs. These just robotic flesh suits. All these things that you can do with these things here is program them. The same way that we're being programmed. You understand that when a baby's in the womb, that it is in water, and water is a vibrational state that it feels whether the conversation in the room is blissful and loving and kind and tender versus animosity, anger, hate, pain, and sorrow. It knows. This is why it's so imperative while the child's still in the womb, man, to, to be aware of what's going on. The baby inside the womb has to be protected from these parasites here, the beast nations. Okay, these are all the demons, folks. And what does it call it? The United Nations. Nations, unis. And why is it unis? Unis is one, united. United is one. Uni is one. Una is one, solo. One, united. This is why it's called the universe because there's only one universe now within that one universe there could be multi-universes underneath of the firmament which have been created by mankind because mankind is always trying to duplicate everything the supreme spirit has done 
So what if mankind and all of their technologies already done all this? What if people like Farrakhan here line himself up with the white lie Jews in the providence of Israel today? These are fake Khazar Jews, okay? This is supposed to be their woolly hair. If that's not right in front of you, that ain't no woolly hair. It's This is woolly hair I hear, Malcolm X, that's woolly hair. Look at Farrakhan, he's got his, his shit pasted down like a white man. You understand? This is a black man underneath the white man rule. This is a black man who sold his soul. This is a parasite right along with both of these nutbag jobbers here. So they're telling us that these little pod babies, they can set up equipment inside of your home right there and you can brew yourself a little baby right there. All you got to do is inseminate this little fucking artificial womb right here and you could grow your baby and you could sing to it inside of the home just like a womb. And it does all the feeding, it does all the biometrical stuff, it gets rid of the waste, it does it all. That is not a human being, you understand? And if it's not born out of a womb, it has no chance of being anything like that. So we're going to close out here on Leviticus chapter 3. I hope you enjoyed the show. God bless all those that love the supreme spirit of truth. Remember, God is spirit, folks, and he requires you to worship him in spirit. Okay, he tells you over and over and over. John... John chapter 4, verse 24, Bible. Okay. God here, almighty, Hebrew magistrate, is a spirit. This God is not the supreme spirit. I'm sorry, it's a magistrate. You have the word magi, which is magic. Those in power are magic men. They're all pulling an illusion over your head. They're a, they're a hive. Okay. So God is spirit and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and truth. That's what I worship today, folks. I don't worship a name. I don't put a name next to God. I don't. I just worship the spirit and truth. I worship the spirit and the truth. And by worshiping the spirit and truth, it has allowed me discernment to finally understand what's being said in the Bible. And that only comes from the creator, folks. You got to turn back to the creator to have this kind of wisdom. Much love. This is White Raptor News Ministries.